Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to basically give you a small, uh, a brief introduction to Zephyr Minerals and our, uh, our uh, new project that we're working on, a uh, Broken Hill style uh, deposit uh, in uh, Colorado. I won't go into the disclaimer. <laughs> they could always read this a little bit later. Um, so where are we located? We're located uh, just outside a town called Canyon City in Colorado. It's about two hours south of Denver, about an hour southwest of, uh, of um, Colorado Springs. We're about 30 miles as the crow flies from Newmont's Cripple Creek mine, and about a quarter of the people that work at Cripple Creek live in Canyon City. Canyon City's claim to fame is it is the prison capital of the USA. They have 13 prisons there, um, including the Supermax where all the real bad guys go. About 22,000 people live there. I'm going to spend just a little bit of time on this uh, on this slide. Um, most of the work that we've done to date, I'm just going to see if I could get up, has been in this area here called uh, the Dawson area. We've got a resource of about 130,000 ounces of high-grade gold, average thickness of about four to five meters. Uh, we get up to 10 to 10 to 15 meters thick in that zone. Um, the, the problem we're running into right now is the mountain basically goes like this, the formation goes like this, so we, we're, we're trying to find some new areas where we could drill near surface. So we've done a couple things, and one of the things we did was we picked up an additional 12 claims out to the east, ran some geophysics, uh, we've got an anomaly out there, ran some geochemistry, we've got some geochemistry targets. We also came down and looked at this area here called the Green Mountain Mine. This is all one main structure, we believe. Um, it's about 12 kilometers long, so it's a very large mineralizing system. When we came down, down to, to Green Mountain here, the reason we did that was we know at Dawson um, the gold uh, dips at 70 degrees to the south. Ten meters above it, we've got a massive sulfide horizon. The gold has almost no sulfides in it, one to two percent. So we came down to the Green Mountain area and just prospected it. We found one sample, there were 13.6 grams gold without any sulfides. So our target at that time was looking at, um, at this as another one of these. We've got the, the, the copper zone, and we're looking 10 meters below to see if we could find that gold zone, which hasn't been explored before. So we picked up that ground in the area, and, uh, and we made a press release. And a couple days after we made the press release, I got a call from uh, Dr. Paul Spry, uh, economic geology professor from Iowa State University, and he said, uh, he had a university student do uh, part of his master's thesis on the Green Mountain Mine. And he said that area looks an awful lot like it's got a lot of the attributes of a Broken Hill type deposit. And Broken Hill is arguably the largest uh, mineral deposit ever discovered in the world. Uh, it's in Australia. And uh, about 250 million tons of high grade lead zinc silver. Uh, today's dollars would be worth about $150 billion. So, um, I said, well, what, you know, why do you, why do you think this? And uh, he said, well, the footwall rocks at Green Mountain are basically identical to um, a, a zone in Australia at Broken Hill called the Potosi Nice. And, uh, and so he said, you know, if you look at the wall rocks on the, the footwall rocks at Green Mountain, they're virtually identical. He said, I cannot tell them apart. And he's a world-class expert. He's probably one of the top 10 research guys on, on Broken Hill type deposits. The other thing he said is um, there's a very specific mineral called gannite. And this gannite in this area runs, uh, has a very specific zinc content of about 66 to 95 or 65 to 95 percent zinc. And, and why that's important is that usually only occurs when you're very near to a massive sulfide deposit. And so the way that, that research came about was BHP Minerals, of course, was the owner of, of the Broken Hill deposit. And they mined that from the 1880s to the 1980s. By the 1980s, they were running out of ore. <laughs> so they did a big geochemical study program and found that, that this gannite only occurred in the 65 to 95 percent zinc content very near to their deposit. And so they then went and did a huge study all over Australia, basically uh, looking for this gannite in a very specific rock type called a Proterozoic rock. It's a late Precambrian. And they found this, this very same gannite in an area called Cannington, which I believe is about 400 miles north of Broken Hill. Uh, once they found the, the gannite there, they, uh, they shot an airborne uh, magnetic survey. And these rocks are extremely magnetic. There's a lot of magnetite and pyrotite in them, so they really show up well with magnetics. 
And they found that they discovered, uh, BHP discovered the Cannington deposit at that time. It's no outcrop at all. It's under 60 meters of, of sand. And, uh, and that deposit is 45 million tons, uh, worth about 25 billion bucks. And it's much bigger than that now. It's continued to grow. They discovered that in 1990 and came on in 1997. So basically what Dr. Spry is saying, we've got that same type of ganite here at the Green Mountain Mine. So the one thing he had a head scratcher about though is Broken Hill type deposits are lead, zinc, silver. And over at Green Mountain, we've got copper, zinc, and gold. So it, 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 the, the, the fingerprint didn't match. So I told him, you know, I said, if you just look a few kilometers over into the El Palomo area of this, uh, of this area, we've got the classic lead, zinc, silver. So the theory uh, that we came up with on this is what we think is happening here is we've got a Graben situation. So this area here is, is, is stationary. And think of, of this as a large regional fault, another fault here. This area and this area are uplifted. So what you see here, you're going to see at depth below here. So the lead, zinc, silver in these two areas has been eroded off, and this is, you've got the full package in this area here. So, so that's, that's kind of the model that, uh, that, that we came up with. Um, since last fall, when this came about, we basically ended up staking, um, find this thing here. We ended up staking all of this ground, all the additional ground. So we've got that ground now. Um, and uh, so that's kind of where it's sitting right now for, for the land package and how we ended up getting this, this new play. We had this ground, uh, we've been working on this play for five years. I didn't understand the significance of the lead, zinc, silver in here until Dr. Spry came and basically laid out his, his geology. Um, I won't go into a lot of this, but uh, very striking similarities between these, these two models. They're both 1.7 billion years old. Um, same metamorphic grade. Um, we do have four drill holes into that middle section, and, uh, and the mineralogy looks very similar to what you see at Broken Hill. So uh, we've got a lot of similarities between those, those two packages. And the other thing we have in there is all the drill holes that we have are very magnetic, just like the Broken Hill type stuff. So we should be able to explore for this with a, um, with a magnetic uh, survey. Um, this is a paleocraton map. This is what the Earth looked like uh, through uh, um, uh, 1.7 billion years ago. Australia was actually right beside Arizona at that time. And this Karlstrom, the, the, the guy I got this from, a uh, university professor in the Midwest, um, he thought that Jerome, Arizona was another one of these broken hill type deposits. That was mined, I think, from the 1860s to the 1940s. And then, of course, Dawson is on the same trend there. So. Um, and uh, Australia at that time was moving straight north. And so 200 million years later, it would be, off, it'd be offsetting the Yukon, for example. Uh, this is our model. So what you end up with is our areas where we've got the copper and gold, those areas are right near the vent and they're hotter minerals, so they deposit out here. Our lead, zinc, and silver are carried by currents, and as they cool off, they're deposited farther away. So that's how you get the two, the, the two uh, uh, mineral packages in the same area. I'll show you the El Palomo section now. So this is the same map with the geology on it. And uh, of course, our main area of interest right now is this El Palomo section. Uh, to put it into perspective, the Cannington deposit is 1.8 kilometers long or wide. This is 3.3 kilometers. So you could fit two Canningtons into that 3.3 kilometer zone. Now why, uh, if you look at our four holes here, we've got a couple over here and we've got a couple more over here. So we've got high grade mineralization over a two kilometer area. And, and uh, so the one thing we don't have here is thickness. If you look at, at Broken Hill and Cannington, they've got large folds in them and it basically thickens up that package of ore. In our case, um, our highest grade is 14% zinc. It's over a foot and a half. Uh, we have some uh, other packages over on the east side, uh, a little bit thicker, up to a few meters thick. <laughs> but what we're looking for is that 10, 20, 30, 40, in Broken Hill's case, up to 100 meters thick of high grade ore. And um, so, um, the other thing we have over there is um, we've got some lead, 
And generally, these broken hill type deposits have extremely high lead contents, uh, pardon me, silver contents. And so in our case, we've got about a, a, a ratio of 50 to 1. So for every 1% of lead, we get 50 grams of silver. Um, one question came up, and that was, why are we exploring for um, you know, this? And we've kind of backed off the, the, the gold zone that we're looking at. So with the gold zone at, at uh, Dawson and Green Mountain, we're basically looking for a million ounce deposit, which is worth $1.3 billion. If you look at the El Palomo section, the target there is a $25 billion target. If you convert that into gold, that's equivalent to 19 million ounces. So that's why the El Palomo section is so important to us. It's looking for a giant as opposed to the gold deposits we're looking for, actually, uh, you know, a million ounces, a regular type of deposit. Uh, this is just the mineralization along trend. It just shows you that, um, that uh, so this is the El Plomo section only. The entire area is mineralized. So there's nowhere in here, it's not like a pinch and swallow. You get a little bit of mineralization, a little bit of mineralization there. The entire 3.3 kilometers is mineralized. What we're looking for is a thickening of that zone at depth. Um, basically, we're hunting for a giant, and the way we find these is you need the gannite, which we have. The next phase is to do airborne geophysics, look for a large magnetic anomaly, and uh, drill the target. Uh, just a piece of our core, and I've got that here if anybody wants to have a look at it. That's from a uh, whole GC9, and I've got it attached to a magnet there just to show how magnetic it is. Uh, finally, this is a, a fairly important slide. It's showing, uh, this was taken from a Broken Hill uh, BHP presentation on Cannington from 2002. It's got all of the major deposits, uh, Broken Hill type deposits. The only small one in there is Pegmont, and it's questionable whether Pegmont is actually a true Broken Hill type. But you'll see that 40 million tons is a small deposit in these things. And the other thing you'll notice is they're very high grade. And uh, the, lead, uh, the silver lead ratios, uh, the highest one is Cannington. Ours is currently 50 to 1. I won't go into this. Um, anybody wants to come and talk about who I am or any of the directors, uh, please see me after. And finally, uh, here's our, uh, our share structures. We basically got uh, uh, just under 50 million shares outstanding. And um, that's, that's what we're looking for. Um, thank you very much.